Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Fiona at Drawings in a Drawer and today we're going to check out this Daniel Smith dot chart which, chart, sorry, which will allow you, allow me to check out the 238, I think 238 colours that this brand has to offer. In fact, I actually think it has more to offer. As you can see here, I am swatching out some of the colours on a piece of uh, paper. I thought I was going to do that for every single colour and then I realised that was going to take me ages. By the way, this is uh, going to be a very chatty video. There will be a lot of mumbling, clearing of throats, background noises and shuffling of papers and you will hear a lot of that. I apologise in advance, but I'm just literally improvising and, um, you know, I've just realised I cannot uh, publish videos very often if I try to do the audio like 16 times for each single video. So let's um, get on with this. Um, as you can see, the colours are beautiful and they literally shine on their own and you just want to get all 238 of them. But be warned, they do not come cheap. I ended up ordering 20 of the 15 ml tubes and it added up to almost 300 euros, which would be somewhat more in dollars currently and a little less in British pounds. One thing you will notice as I swatch these paints is that some seem to not activate at all, no matter how much water I added and scrubbed. So I wasn't impressed by that much. Now, why did I get these paints? I already have Winsor & Newton, Sennelier and Schmincke, which are all artist grade paints. I have to admit I'm a watercolour art supplies junkie and I just had to see for myself why so many people say these are the best watercolours ever. And why the heck are they so expensive? Well, as you can see for yourself, they are pretty gorgeous and just make you want to pick up your paintbrushes and start experimenting, which is what I did at the end of this video uh, with what was left on the chart. Uh, as I tested these colours, some immediately stood out to me. My favourite subjects to paint are people, portraits and woodland animals. So colours like organic vermilion, terre ercolano and the yellow ochre just caught my eye straight away. And other colours like cascade green, undersea green and oh my god, the green appetite, appetite, appetite I think. The granulation of it is just magical. That's what I noticed about Daniel Smith pigments. Some of them have this amazing granulation, more than I've ever seen in other brands. And I think that is one of this brand's strongest points. In watercolour, granulation is really useful because it helps us to get texture in for stuff like rocks, bark, and, you know, even, I don't know, anything, almost anything that... Um, Look at that quinacridone burnt orange and that perlin maroon. They are just so vibrant and alive, really amazing watercolours. Um, I had heard a lot about Moonglow and I swatched it again and again and I really didn't get the hype about this, um, this colour. It granulates a lot, but there was another colour uh, called Shadow Violet, which I found much more interesting and uh, I kept on right till the very end swatching them one against the other when I was trying to decide which colours to actually go ahead and buy and I decided I was going to buy Shadow Violet and you know just forget about um, Moonglow for the time being and in the end as I was you know picking the colours I just uh, caved in and bought both. The colours have now arrived in my uh, home, at my home, and I am not, I'm not, I can't open them because they're a Christmas present. So I, have, I will be opening them on Christmas and I really can't wait. I'm as excited as a, as a seven-year-old kid. So these are all the iridescent, iridescent colours and these are the ones that I swatched out that interested me most. And uh, I didn't think I bought all of them, but I, I, I got the, these colours, these earthy tones, and that's organic vermilion up at the top there on the right-hand side. And the cascade green is one I underline. That is such a beautiful colour. And the one above it is a green appetite. And, yeah, I just used what was left on the chart to paint this Harry Potter. I really, really thoroughly enjoyed creating this painting. 
I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan, but I would say that I I, I like I enjoy that kind of uh, genre. So I I was excited about painting Harry Potter because I had never painted it, and uh, my son loves them. And right off the bat, I managed to get some paint on the right. A corner at the bottom of the of my paper and I just put a piece of uh, masking tape over it and decided to swatch my colours on the extra um, paper that was um, left at the bottom of that of this uh, of this uh, sheet of uh, arches watercolour cold pressed paper which is a paper I always used for this uh, painting I think I used um, organic vermilion uh, watered down with a little yellow ochre and I think I had some uh, fallow blue fallow blue do you pronounce a t in it fallow my god that's really difficult to pronounce anyway as I started painting with these colours, I immediately just kind of realised what the, everything's about. It, they, they just have a life of their own. They, this, this painting was easy to do, and I think it was also because these paintings, these paints kind of tend to work for you, work with you and not against you. And the hair, I used Van Dyke Brown. And uh, on top of that, I used all the blacks that were left on the dot chart. Here I am shuffling them around, trying to find the ones that I used up completely. And it's lunar black, ivory black, lamp black, and some other kind of black that I cannot read anymore because I pain, oh, maybe it's pain's grey. Anyway, I used a lot of black on top of that brown for the hair using a flat brush and I really like the effect that created because the hair looks pretty realistic and yeah, um, it looks like real hair, I think. I was very pleased with that. And um, for, the, for the eyes, I used a variety of the wonderful blues that this brand has to offer. And uh, I think I definitely used some of the turquoise. I think I had, I'm going to pronounce it phthalo because I just don't know how you pronounce it. Because I think I, you don't spell the T. You don't, the T is silent. Oh, it's such, if anybody knows where that word comes from, uh, please tell me because I really don't know what the heck it means. Uh, so what, what I, 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 this is a really, really cool one. I ordered that one too because I could not help myself. Excuse the shuffling again. There's several golds in Daniel uh, Smith. We have uh, irid iridescent Aztec gold, iridescent antique bronze, and then another kind of gold, which is iridescent gold stone and iridescent, iridescent bronze. Excuse me. And in the end, I picked iridescent Aztec gold because I realized that was the gold I used to paint those uh, frames on those glasses which I think was really cool and worked really well, much better than other metallic watercolours that I have used. So I absolutely had to get a gold. I was about to get a silver too, but, you know, I was up to 300 euros and I thought, like, let's stop here and maybe, you know, later on. So then I went in and had this kind of hazy background, which is a thing I do often in my portraits. But when I showed it to my boys, my husband and my two kids, they were like, no, you've got to have a dark background. So this is what it looks like after I put that dark background in. I used indigo, I used that phthalo blue again, and I used some of the black. And I think I used some moon glow and uh, shadow violet. Anyway, if you want to subscribe, that would be great. Hit that like button, that would be great. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm at Drawings in a Drawer. And on Skillshare, you'll find my Woman in Watercolour class by Fiona Dipinto. Bye for now.